while I was in college, I met Monica, and she was a new Christian. She had uh, just gotten saved right before she got into college, and we dated uh, for the last half of my time there. We started going to church just kind of sporadically while we were in college, and, and we didn't have necessarily know what we were supposed to be doing, but we just knew we should be going to church. And when we graduated from college, we lived in, uh, I lived up in Chicago and Monica lived down here in Indianapolis, but whenever I'd come down to visit her, we'd come here to Bethesda. It was interesting, one day I was, I was uh, actually sitting up in the balcony in a service and there was an evangelist here and, and he, uh, he asked, he said, if you know you're going to heaven, you know, raise your hand up. And I sat there and said, yeah, I can't do that. I can't raise my hand up. And I knew it right at that moment that I couldn't do that. And I just sat there and cried and Monica was with me and he actually came up. The, the service dismissed and everybody went their own different directions and he came up there and we sat down and we went down, went through Romans and looked at many of the passages in Romans down the Romans road and, and it was at that time that God really touched my heart and really started to make a change in my life and, uh, and I knew it. I knew it at that, at that moment that, that uh, it was different. God was there. I knew His presence was, was in my life and, and it was definitive and I knew it. So that was in 89. And uh, shortly after that, about uh, six, eight months after that, Monica and I got married and we started attending here full time once, uh, once I moved down into the Indianapolis area. And so we've been going here uh, ever since then. So. In that time frame, it was a great place to be because we could do anything. We decided we're going to go you know, run sewer down the street. We go raise the money, we run sewer down the street. We want to go build a children's home, we go build a children's home. We want to put on living Christmas trees, we put, I mean, we can do anything. I, and I don't, I don't know what causes, uh, what exactly happened or how it transpired, but I, I know I, I look and I think sometimes people can get a little too dependent on themselves and what they've set up, the, the processes, the, for lack of a better term, the machine that's been built. And in some ways, I think you lose your dependence on God and you also lose your spiritual closeness to God. And, and I think that's a dangerous place. To be. That's a dangerous thing for me in my life, let, let alone a church. At some point in time, you lose your dependence on God, and that's, that just causes problems. Pastor Gillette uh, was here for, for quite a while, and I think he did a great job of, of getting us focused on our hearts. He talked a lot about having a heart for God, not just doing things, not just saying, hey, we accomplished this, or we did this, or we gave money to this, or whatever it is we might have done, but really saying, hey, is your heart lined up with God? And I remember he, he, he was another person who mentored my life. He had a lot of, we had a lot of discussions, just one-on-one, -on -one, where he would challenge me on, what is God, how is he changing your heart? I see what you do, and I see what's on the outside, but what is he really doing in your heart? What's really going on in your life? And I do think that, that starting then, and it's, it's been over time, and I think Pastor Kurt's done a fantastic job of this, is, is really challenging us to say, is your heart changed or not? Because God wants our heart. God's, God wants a broken and contrite heart. That's what he's looking for. Obedience will follow that. It's interesting. It's, it's when, you, when you're broken for God, you will follow God because you want to follow God. I, I get a lot of joy out of watching people change just a little. When I sit in my life group and I hear somebody talk about how God's Word impacted their life this week, and it'll, really, and it'll be sometimes very, very small ways, that they'll say, hey, I realize that in my conversations with my son or my daughter or my husband or my neighbor, that my attitude's wrong. <clears throat> That's a really simple thing. That's awesome. Uh, you know, part of having discussions, you asked about why you have discussions in class and why it's so important to do that, is some of those conversations are messy. Pastor said that a couple times, and he's exactly right. They're messy because it's hard to understand. You're dealing, you're dealing with sinners, all of us, myself included. And that, that just ends up, uh, unfortunately, being a little messy. What would I say to God? I love you. Thank you for dying for my sins because I don't, I don't, I'm not worthy of that, you know. I'm a sinner. Still am. My name is Mark Forsyth and Jesus is my Lord. <laughs>